Well, congratulations, Pat. What does uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, that's huge. That's I think that's the pinnacle of uh, international cricket, winning a one-day World Cup, especially over here in India in front of a crowd like this. Um, phones off, please, Cole. First press conference. We get rid of that bloke. Um, yeah, that's huge. Um, you know, it's been a big year for everyone, um, but you know, the, our cricket team's been to here in India, Ashes, World Test Championship, and to top it off with this is just just huge. And these are the moments that you'll remember for the rest of your life. So, why is it the pinnacle? Oh, it's just every international team comes together. Um, you only get a shot at it every four years. Um, you know, even if you have a ten-year career, you might only get two chances at it. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, the whole cricket world stops with this World Cup, so it doesn't get any better. Yeah. <laughs> Much better. Uh, Pat, uh, you always spoke about the 2015 World Cup being, like, a highlight of your career. Uh, but to win a World Cup in India, at this stadium with so many people, and the silence you spoke about as well, like, can you just take us through that journey today, like, from getting to the ground to now? Yeah, I mean, I always like to say I'm pretty relaxed, but I was a little bit nervous this morning. Um, you know, just pacing around, uh, waiting for it to kind of get started. Just seeing the the sea of blue in the hotel, getting nearer the ground and just seeing the sea of blue, walking, making its way to the ground, all the cars parked with their selfie cameras out. Um, you, you kind of you knew you were walking into something pretty special. And then to, to walk out, you know, for the toss and just see 130,000, blue Indian shirts, um, it's, you know, uh, an experience you'll never forget. Um, so, awesome day and, uh, yeah, I mean, the good thing was they, they weren't too noisy for most of it. Uh, Pat, a um, couple of things. Now, now that it's run and won, uh, what did you really think of the pitch? Uh, and B, um, what was behind the uh, decision to bowl first, given how well it worked out? Uh, the, the pitch played pretty well, actually. Um, it, was, it was quite slow and basically, you know, no bounce. Um, but I, I don't think the bounce was anything different to anywhere else in the tournament. Um, probably didn't spin as much as I thought it was. You know, yesterday it looked really dry, um, but it, it was quite firm today. So, um, yeah, the wicket was, was fine, really. Um, and then, yeah, the toss, we were kind of umming and ahhing right up until... Um, until the toss, really, but I thought, you know, half a chance of the wicket getting better tonight. Um, and, you know, in a World Cup game, you, you can make a mistake bowling and it doesn't really matter too much, but if you make a mistake batting and you're under pressure, um, you know, it can be fatal. So it just felt like it was the right time to go out and have a bowl. And just given how big a year it's been for you on so many fronts, how much are you, how are you feeling just, I suppose, emotionally, yeah, I suppose given the spectrum of emotions you, you felt this year? Yeah, um, I mean, at this moment, just incredibly proud, really, of the year we've had. Um, you know, I've, I've obviously yeah, had a really big year. Um, I know my family at home is watching. Just got a message from Dad saying, yeah, he's had a lot of 4 a.m. wake up, or, you know, not going to bed till 4 a.m. So he, he's as pumped as anything. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, you sacrifice a lot to play for Australia, and um, everyone in the team has, and we've spent a lot of this year away. Um, but to be, you know, we do it for these moments. And, yeah, my wife and two-year-olds probably asleep, hopefully asleep. Um, but, you know, they're all pumped. They do the journey with us. So everyone's got their own story, but um, there's a lot of proud people out there in our team. But uh, as a leader, we saw very good leadership from you. We saw especially... Uh, going back to Afghanistan, when you made a good supporting role with uh, Maxwell. How do you feel about uh, your leadership throughout the tournament and uh, uh, how do you rate uh, Travis Head uh, in his today? Uh, Trev Head was phenomenal. Um, I think I said it on stage. I mean, I think a lot of credit should also go to you know, Andrew McDonald and, and George Bailey, the selectors, to take a punt. You know, he had a broken finger <laughs> or broken hand for the half of the tournament. But to keep him in the squad was a huge risk. Um, and the medical team were fantastic, obviously, to, to get him into a, a place where he could perform. So, um, 
that, that was a big risk. I think we could have been made to look really silly if that didn't pay off, but um, you got to take those risks to win a tournament. And Trav, the player, we've seen in Test cricket, oh, he just he epitomised everything I want out of a cricket team. He takes the game on, he plays with a smile, um, he just puts the pressure right back onto the opposition, and he's just great fun to be around. So I, I couldn't be happier uh, for Trav. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Pat, uh, as Australians, you give a lot of emphasis to Test cricket and also Ashes. As a captain, you have won the World Test Championship. As a captain, you have won this World Cup. Which is the best moment or it will come when you beat uh, England in Ashes? England Ashes? Uh, I th th this is, no doubt. A World um, Test Championship um, was huge. Like, again, another two-year campaign. Um, but, yeah, uh, an ODI World Cup, it's just the rich history, I think. Um, and to come over to a place like India, where you know you're, the conditions are so different to back home, um, it's, it's pretty gruelling. You know, 11 games in whatever it was, five, six weeks. Um, but, yeah, the way the, the group stuck together and got through it and, uh, yeah, holding the medal, is, that's the pinnacle. Pat, you, you touched on Trav there. Can you just kind of take us inside the humming and ahhing about whether you, you would pick him? Or did you ever think you might leave him out? And on a similar front with, with Manus, what you, you guys left him out of an 18-man squad or whatever it was yep. a few months ago. Can you kind of take us inside that too? Yeah, um, I, I mean, probably start with the Manus one. You know, we, we wanted to be pretty brave this World Cup. We, we didn't want to kind of limp into the semi-finals. We wanted to be the team that could score 400. Um, and you, you saw that the way we, we kind of shaped up with um, Trav, Ma, uh, Warner, and then... Um, and, and having Marshy at number three, we wanted to be really aggressive. And then, you know, a couple of our all-rounders are obviously aggressive to finish off the innings. So um, we, we would rather fail that way. Um, but then, you know, Manus just showed his class. And um, in, in South Africa, it was, you had to pick him. He was fantastic. And he was playing a different style to probably what he did for the first start of his ODI career. And it was paying off. And um, we know he's a gun. So, yeah, you had to try and find room for him. Um, and then, you know, the Trav head one was, we thought his World Cup was straight over. Um, it wasn't until, I think it was about the next night afterwards where uh, Ronnie came up to me. He's like, I haven't slept all last night. I think we're going to keep him. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take the risk. He might be right for the Netherlands. And then if we're going to make the finals uh, and we want to win the World Cup, I think he needs to be there for the finals. So, um, yeah, it was his idea. And... Uh, yeah, again, great work by the medical team. and It means you probably don't have the second spinner in your squad, um, which is a risk, but, yeah, obviously paid off. Just on today's game, uh, when you got Virat out, is that about as sweet a moment as you've had on a cricket field? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did take a second in the huddle just to acknowledge the, the silence that was going around the crowd. Um, yeah, it just felt like it was one of those days where it was all made for him to score another 100 like he normally does, and... Yeah, that was satisfying. Pat, you'll remember you went to see Bruce Springsteen, I think, during the Ashes, right at the start of the summer, to prepare for one of the days of the Ashes. What was last night's preparation? <laughs> yeah, boss wasn't playing at a meta bad last night. Um, what did we do last night? Very chilled. Uh, we had a team meeting. Uh, and then, yeah, we just, a few of the boys sat around, had dinner, and then played about half an hour of Call of Duty. Uh, that's about my limit. And then... I uh, hop off and let the real boys go and get a few wins. Pat, as a World Cup winning captain, what will be your suggestion to the men who matter about the format, uh, about this format, the ODI format, the future of ODI format? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I, I must say, you know, maybe because we won, but, uh, you know, I, I did fall in love with ODI again this, this World Cup. Um, I, I think the scenario where every game really matters it, it, it means it it does mean a bit different to just a bilateral so yeah I, I don't know I, I mean the world cup's got such a rich, rich history i'm sure it's going to be around for a long time and um yeah there's so many wonderful games so many wonderful stories within this you know last couple of months so don't know i um i think there's definitely a place i paid uh, congratulations first of all and uh, uh, when Alan Border won the first World Cup for Australia and India in 1987, 
the Australian player, players were not well versed with Indian uh, spinning, uh, spinner friendly wickets. As of now, almost every Australian player is playing in IPL. So, do you think that it helps to know, to be very well acquainted with the nature and mood of the Indian wickets, especially the spinning uh, friendly wickets? Does it help? Yeah, it does help. Uh, I mean, in white ball cricket, you still don't get spinning wickets all that often, particularly in IPL, but for sure it helps. Um, you know, I think I've said it a few times, we've, we've pretty much everyone in our 11s probably played more uh, white ball cricket in India in the last five or ten years than we have in Australia, so uh, no doubt that helps. Yeah. Pat, there, yeah, uh, there's been a couple of years where Australia went, uh, they had a really tough time and going through it, and uh, yet you, you've come out, you won a World mm -hmm. Test Championship, you now won a World Cup. Is, is it fair to say that Australia's back of the perch is the, the best side in the world? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's probably for others to judge that, but um, yeah, you know, couldn't be prouder of the team for the last two years. You know, we've, yeah, we've had some tough series, but we've, we've won some amazing series as well, and everyone stood up, and yeah, we feel like we've got yeah, you know, a, a great red ball team and, you know, the white ball team's won two trophies in the last few years, so it's, yeah, everything, things are looking pretty rosy. Yeah. Captain, I just wanted to know um, the making of a champion team, you know, you've been involved with this team for a long time. How, how has it been? How tough is it to know, to go out there and do the job every time? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really tough because you're playing against the best teams in the world and every team wants to achieve the same thing. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really tough. I always keep saying about our team, we've got a lot of experience and, um, you know, we've got many different characters, which is great. You want that in a team. Um, but everyone buys in. Everyone does what the team needs. Everyone's there to look after each other. And, um, you know, I think that's that's something that's contributed to a few of our successes over the years. Yeah. Uh, Skipper, what was the thinking behind giving short spells to your bowlers, all seven bowlers, except you who bowled five overs, one long spell? All of the bowlers bowled either one over spell or two over spell. What was the thinking behind that? Yeah, it's, you know, in, in say, test cricket, when you're trying to find a wicket, you might change some fielders and some bowling plans. Feels like in one-day cricket, you don't have as many options. So um, we thought maybe, you know, the way to upset the rhythm rather than some setting some wacky fields is to just go one over spells. So, um, yeah, seemed to up, well, you know, seemed to kind of take them an over to settle in. So we just kept going and, yeah, tried pretty much everyone there for an over and everyone did a great job. And, um, yeah, it makes kind of sequencing in the back 10 overs a little bit easier as well when you've, you know, you've got plenty of resources to draw. Yeah, uh, did it help that Australia had faced more crisis situations than India? Did it help in conquering the fear of failure in the final? Uh, hard to say. Um, you know, we're, it's really hard to be standoff, you know, standoffish in a final. Um, but we made it really clear in the group we're all in on making sure we weren't the team that stood off today. We wanted to take the game on, play, play the way that got us to the final. Um, and maybe that comes from playing other finals before, um, also maybe missing out on some other finals in different tournaments. But, um, yeah, I can't speak for the opposition, but the group today was as confident going to finals as, as I've seen the team.